um, open and point through. And uh, I think that um, um, alongside alongside work of portal, uh, we organize hot, hot line for media, allowing to inform about relations in the course of voting as well as getting the current information on the current situation. Unfortunately, uh, not everybody appraised fair and and um, great coverage of voting process. Uh, uh, on the on the 13th of September, daytime, open elements of monitors portal underwent mass the dot attack. Huh? The work of system was efficiently launched with reserved energy on tension for address. And uh, the majority of, of violations uh, we think can be classified as insignificant. Mm -hmm. The most spread among them are um, uh, more than one person entered polling booth, uh, voter field ballot not entering a polling booth, and others. And the biggest part of detective violations, um, around around 70 percent, was settled immediately. Election committee didn't prevent wo work of monitors and quickly reacted on complaints and appeals. Mm -hmm. So. Um, all the all the monitors, uh, oh, so, uh, monitors work. Uh, what they did, uh, it's all made possible not only to find out relations, but it also gave a lot of useful experience and remarks to the work of online system, which will be taken into account in the perspective of further election campaign. Uh, so I think that the main the main idea of <laughs> of our uh, situation. Okay, um, we have limited time. Now, Mr. Alyoshkin, uh, you're not the oh, government, yeah. right? You're not the government and you're not the opposition. You are an alliance of, uh, I guess, of third parties. But now, what yeah. is your overall finding, the, the conclusion of your work? Is it that these elections were totally fair, mainly fair, half and half fair, unfair, un you know, or uh, totally unfair? Where, where would you put these? In other words, did, did these elections represent a meaningful democratic exercise? Um, all, the, uh, all the opposition parties uh, approved uh, uh, that, that elections were mainly fair, I think. Um, there, is, uh, there is a stereotype that in Russia elections are unfair. That's just a stereotype. Um, Mm -hmm. We worked together with all the monitors, with all uh, with open aliens, and all our people uh, could see the results, could see the process. And uh, as I see, as my team sees, uh, the elections were kind of fair. And okay. If there were some, um, and if there were some violations. Uh, they were punished. <laughs> okay, so I, I think that's yeah. very important, right? That, that that's a an independent view. Again, not the government, not the uh, the all out uh, sort of Navalny opposition, to be sure. But it's basically fair, uh, and I think this probably compares favorably with things going on in the United States. My God, what we've had here is, of course, a scandal all around the world. So let me ask you then, uh, what's the next step for your organization, the Open Alliance of Monitors? Where, what will you do next? Um, next, uh, we would, uh, um, next we will work with the results. Uh, we will uh, work really with the results of the elections, uh, with people, with, uh, with facts of uh, maybe violations if they uh, if they had place uh, so uh, we we need to analyze analyze our work uh, to make uh, to make next elections uh, on, on the yeah. fair <laughs> fair I but I understand you're going to have national parliamentary elections for the state Duma yeah. next year, correct? Yeah. You're going to be in that? Yeah. 
You're all right. Okay. And when when is that election? When in the springtime? Uh, sorry, uh, by uh, the, the connection of there are some. I, I'm just could, asking could when, when, when will the national parliamentary elections be held? Is that do we know the date? The date when they will be held. Um. Kagda. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Hello? Okay, so sometime next year, and you're going to work on that. Um, um, uh, 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 you asked me about the elections to the state Duma, yeah? Yeah. When? Yeah. Um, the, eight, uh, the 18th of September uh, in uh, 2016. Okay. That was uh, a good friend, Yakov Alyoshkin, of the Open Alliance of Monitors, and I'm sure we'll get reports about uh, this question as we, we move towards those uh, Russian elections in about a year, just about a year from right now, a year from today, as far as I can see. Thank you very much, and we'll be right back with yeah. more of World Crisis Radio. Welcome back to World Crisis Radio. Webster Tarpley here in Washington, D.C. Now, uh, we've just dealt with the Russian elections of this past uh, Sunday uh, with our friend from the Open Alliance of Election Monitors. And now we would like to go to Athens, Greece, to get uh, a report. And this will be the final pre-election report, uh, report on the uh, Greek election, which will be held now on Sunday, the 20th of September, and we fortunately joined once again by Michael Chiotinas, Michael Chiotinas in Athens, Greece, uh, concerning, first of all, what's going on in Greece, and then we want to talk a little bit about uh, something that we, we welcome very much and we're absolutely in favor of, that is in Paris on the 12th, that is to say uh, a week ago, we had Yanis Varoufakis, the former finance minister of Greece, along with Jean-Luc Mélenchon of the Parti de Gauche uh, of France, Oscar Lafontaine of Die Linke in Germany, and Stefano Fassina, uh, who is – this is a, a guy who uh, was in the uh, – uh, well, the neo-communist party, right? The PD, I guess. Uh, and they're talking about – a plan B for Europe, and they're talking about a conference to be held in Paris in November. So we are highly interested, and we urge people to, to take part in this process, right? Make sure that it's diverse, open, fair, and uh, that it leads to an actual program. So welcome, Michael Chiotinas. Uh, what does it look like two days from that election? Hello. A lot of things to say, not much time to say it. Uh, now, polling shows Syriza and the Conservatives neck and neck, uh, close to a tie. I don't believe we'll see that in the election result. Syriza is going to come first by a fairly safe lead. Uh, it'll be an easy victory for Tsipras. But the question is, what kind of a government can we expect to see then? And generally, what should, be, what should we be looking for? What is at stake in this election? Now, polls show ANEL, the independent Greek, Syriza's coalition partner, under the 3% threshold that a party must reach to enter parliament. In other words, to be represented. Uh, people feel that when they vote for a party that will get less than 3%, uh, then their vote is lost. It didn't count for anything. So mainstream media controlled polls, uh, they tend to underestimate parties not likable to the oligarchy and that are close to that 3% in order to drive voters away from it. Right. I'm sorry to, to, come, to become so technical, but this is important stuff. Now, in January's election, polls again showed in the independent Greeks under the 3% threshold, around 2.5%, and they actually got closer to 5%, double that. Um, why am I talking so much about the independent Greeks? Well, it was back in January, it was the only consistent anti-austerity party uh, ready to clash with the European political elites. And also, it was the only culturally right-wing 
anti-austerity party. And I always thought it was essential to have right-wing representation of anti-austerity politics in government right, right. Uh, in order to avoid the civil war climate. You know, right. that was my, that was my um, uh, concern. Right now, once again, uh, polls show that uh, this independent Greeks party under the 3% threshold. Of course, this time around, this, part, this party also signed uh, the third bailout deal along with Syriza and Alexis Tsipras. So this party has lost its essence, what gave them a reason to exist. Um, so their annihilation is not impossible. But you also think they are no threat to the European establishment any, any, anymore. However, if the independent Greeks are unable to give Tsipras the seats he needs in parliament to form a government, then there comes Topotami, the river, this culturally center-left, but actually neo-fascist, neoliberal, you know, common sense type party. And it's going to be the coalition partner, along with PASOK, the old socialists. And from Schäuble's point of view, these obedient parties are much preferable to some crazy, impulsive uh, right-wing populists. So, if the right. independent Greeks indeed fail to get in parliament, we are probably going to see a government of Syriza, the Socialists, and this river party, Topotami. So, a government controlled by Berlin, imposing a neo-colonial agreement, and selling off the whole country. But, there is an even more important point here. This election is going to consolidate the TINA doc doctrine, T-I-N-A, you know, there is no alternative. The old neoliberal <laughs> impact. I think that is exactly the reason why we're having elections right now in the first place. All good willing people of Europe will see Syriza governing according to the Troika's conditionalities, imposing harsh austerity and not being able to deal with corruption and oligarchical power. Uh, because under this deal, no law can be discussed in parliament unless it is first approved by the Troika. That's how close the supervision is. Now, apart from national sovereignty, that's now openly abolished, uh, seeing Syriza govern in such a way, in effect not governing, uh, this is humiliating. And thus, um, it is politically catastrophic for the left in Europe. So, I actually think that the European elites right now pretty much want Syriza to win. The Tina doctrine is going to triumph under a mm -hmm. Syriza government governing in such a way. Um, uh, someone can say that this could be temporary. In the coming months, there are going to be elections in Portugal, Spain, Ireland. Um, Tsipras himself is probably hoping for something to come out of these elections. And then maybe things in Europe will start to change. The rise of Podemos in Spain, to the extent that Podemos are something positive, anyway. Right. Uh, some some, some anti-austerity political forces rising in Portugal, etc. Uh, the hypothesis is that these are signs that Europe is slowly changing for the better. Alas, I think these are small signs of resistance, indicative of the fact that Europe is actually rapidly changing for the worse. And in this context... I don't think any real positive change is possible in a reasonable amount of time uh, that can ensure the survival of the Greek economy, uh, the Greek society. Uh, just, well, we still have a couple of minutes now. We've got that other party, though, right? We've got the uh, the popular unity, I guess it, it is, right? Yes, we what's have the with them? And what's uh, with their program? Yes, well... I, I refuse to take into consideration the, the, the communists and the Nazis because, you know, uh, the communists are isolationists, the Nazis are, well, Nazis. I don't, I don't, I don't want to uh, see uh, the Weimar analogy materializing too literally. Uh, the only progressive force in Greek politics right now, real progressive, is the popular unity, uh, the part of Syriza that broke off following the signing of the third bailout deal. Uh, they are for a Grexit, but not as a, as a tool, not as an end to itself. Uh, they, are, they want social change before there can be uh, change in Europe and uh, political change. 
uh, in, a, in large scale. Um, Varoufakis himself published an article today saying 